in the world did it get to be picked on the day that it got to be picked? Because everybody knows what week that was. <laughs> was this done like on purpose or did it just align or what do you know about the date? Because, of course, November 5th is United States elections for the year of 2024. And you're starting this party on the 7th. And I'm like, OK. <laughs> Welcome to Unbiased and on the Fence. I have Candace Crawl Goldman with, with me today, special guest. How are you doing, Candace? I am so happy to be here. I'm doing great. It's a great August day. How are you doing, Shane? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. And for those who don't know already, because this is like hot off the press news. In fact, we haven't even updated the website or yet or, or anything like that yet. Candace Crawl Goldman will be joining us in Nashville, Tennessee. Can you believe that? Woohoo! <laughs> I'm telling you what, I'm so excited. I can't, I just can't hardly stand it. Let me put the flyer on the screen here because this is all new information. We're just now getting the artwork ready and everything. So yeah, Woo! this is it. How Whee! about that? So we're excited. You guys can take a screenshot if you want. If you want to uh, look into anybody, they've got their web addresses right underneath. But uh, yeah, take a screenshot. We're so excited. This is coming up. It's less than 90 days away at this point. We're in that 90 day window. So people are getting their tickets and getting their combinations and everything ready. So let me come back to you. All righty. <laughs> so fantastic. So, um, you know, I said this to you or asked you this privately, uh, but maybe you want to share. I mean, how in the world did it get to be picked on the day that it got to be picked? Because everybody knows what week that was. <laughs> was this done like on purpose or did it just align or what do you know about the date? Because, of course, November 5th is United States elections for the year of 2024 and you're starting this party on the 7th and I'm like okay <laughs> how about that huh no okay so when we were working out the dates we were like wanting to go with the dates from the original year in 2019 when it was it was it's the same exact days and dates as in 2019 and then we went to move it a week later but then it got a little to be even too close to thanksgiving and something else was going on in nashville that week so universe wanted it that week for whatever reason and it, it makes me happy because i know there is a lot going on and it'd be a perfect time for all of us to get together you know right i mean my first thought was really Really? And then I thought, you know what, the more and more I've thought about it, the more that we people who think and believe that we have um, power to help create the reality that we want, what more perfect <laughs> of a time could it be to have people like that come together and help choose, like, you know, Cynthia says, you know, that how good can it get, right? Absolutely. How good can it get with, with all of us? And I have to tell you, I mean, you may already know who she is, but a uh, fellow BQH practitioner, Chrisilla Lewis, is coming from London. And I think she's actually like maybe even flying on, on election day or something from, from uh... London to Kansas. And then we're going together. And I think my husband's going to go too. Uh, it all kind of depends on farm sitters and whoever's here to take care of my dad. Um, but and then we're stopping in Springfield, uh, Missouri, and picking up two more people. So, I mean, we're coming with a caravan. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's going to be really an exciting excited. time to, to get together. And, you know, I was thinking about these special times of getting together now means so much. We got together at East City a few years ago, and we've lost four or five people that was in that group since then. You know, and it was like, wow, if we wow. hadn't really met then and made that connection... That was like, a, that would have been a missed opportunity. And it was before the whole lockdown and everything, you know. And how about right. that with the BQH, you know. I, I was thinking like how perfect it was when your system came out. And for you guys that know, this is like my mentor and teacher for the work I do with people. And so it's this is an honor to, to work with someone who worked directly with Dolores Cannon, one of my guides from the other side that helped me. So, uh, yeah, kudos to you. And thank you for coming on here, by the way. Well, you're so, so welcome. You know, I had people privately, people who anybody would know their names if I would say them. And of course, I'm not going to say them. 
uh, but people who are still doing Dolores's method only who said, you know, that's great, whatever you're doing, Candace, what you're doing, but I'm never going to do sessions online. I just, you know, I don't want to, I like people coming in. I'm like, well, I do too, but sometimes it doesn't work that way. And I'm just following my intuition. And so many people who said, well, good on you, do, do what you think, but I'm never going to do that. Well, a lot of those never going to do that. They're, that's only how they're doing, or that's how they're doing it only now, or or they're doing both, you know. So it sort of was just me, again, following it, the intuition, even though <laughs> if you took a survey and if you asked people, there wasn't a lot of popularity for this. You know, I was creating it and putting it together and all of that, you know, even in 2017, just kind of quietly, like trying it. You know, does, is it really um, the same? Is, is it really a strong? Is it really what's not safe about it? And you know what? Now that there's thousands of BQA practitioners across BQH practitioners across the world, mm -hmm. I can now confidently make this statement, which I couldn't make, of course, uh, at first. I believe it's safer. It is safer to do this online. Why? Because a lot of people who come, even if you say bring a driver, they don't. They drive themselves to you. And even if you make sure that they're awake and grounded, do you know how many times I've gotten the message, I thought I was awake? Right. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like anesthesia. Little... You just don't realize it. Yeah. You don't realize right. how groggy you are. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, I remember that when I had my session with Dolores, the whole next day was weird, right? Yeah. So where would you rather be at home on your sofa or behind the wheel of a car? Well, I find uh, two other benefits because uh, I do them in person too. And it's so hard to get a good recording. I mean, without having multiple devices around and things like that. And I, I'm, I'm always aware of EMFs, you know, you don't want to surround everyone with EMFs exactly. either, right? So it's like doing it this way, it's like you get the sound quality is much better and the person is in the comfort of wherever they, they can pick the most comfortable place that they can find they don't have to come exactly. to a weird place when they need to take a break to go to the bathroom because that happens quite often you know we are so used to getting up in our sleep and going to the bathroom so they don't wake up as much as they would in person if they had to go into the strange bathroom and figure out oh. you know what i mean it's just the it, it pulls you out of it so by them being there I've never had a problem with someone just getting right back into a session because they're used to going to the bathroom and getting right back into the bed. So, yeah. So it's just natural. It's just natural. Yeah. You remind me of something. Um, once when I was doing a session with another practitioner many years ago, it we we had just started the session and I had a little voice recorder over here that was a uh, digital recorder, which was recording my voice. But this gal, you know what she did? She took her phone which she did her sessions, she recorded them on, and I never want to do that. I would like a separate device. She put her phone right here on my chest while I was in trance. Ugh. I'm going to suggest that none of you out there do that. <laughs> yeah. It was absolutely, uh, it was so disconcerting. And it was, um, you know, we, um, we managed uh, through it. But, you know, this is somebody who, I'd had a lot of sessions, but anyway, I understand and I agree. I agree with you there. And um, I'm just so happy with all of the sessions that you've been doing and all the things that you can talk about. And we were talking about Dolores before you ever even uh, pressed record and how much more have you heard her since you made that one video that well, yeah, I did a video late last year where Dolores um, came through to me, and that's never happened with anyone I've never met in person before. But of course, she's come through sessions before and with a message and let me know she's one of my guides. She's come through you before with a message for me. And then so this wasn't like it wasn't a total surprise, but the, the clarity of how it came through. And I can describe it like this, like you're listening to Del Dolores Cannon's voice on a YouTube video. And then like you pause it and then you just kind of replay how clear it is in your mind what you just heard. And that's how it sounded. It sounded like I was just replaying her voice back in my mind from a YouTube video. And I just started, you know, taking down what she was saying. And um, and then even later, I had done a recording. I wish I had just written it down because when I talked, it felt like I kind of messed up the connection a little bit. 
of what I was hearing. And I wish I would have just jotted it down because later when I was like, you know, transcribing it, she was correcting things that I had like messed up or whatever. So she's really particular. Yes, she <laughs> so, is. So like, I thought she was gone and I'm just writing it down and she's like still there, like making sure this message gets, gets out right. So it was a pleasure for her to come through to me like that. You know, I have a good story with that. I did something and it's been more than a year now and I've never released it. And I always, I'm asking myself why, and there's some sort of reason I haven't, but I did this thing with my session with Dolores, which I've never released publicly. I've talked about it a lot, but I played that recording with some friends of mine all online and myself. And we all like relived my session together. Like they went into trance wow. with like with me and re-experienced my caveman life while Dolores was asking questions. It was sort of an experiment, you know? Wow. But here, amazing. yeah. Oh yeah. There's a lot to talk about with that. And that may be why I'm holding off still. There's, there's so much about it. That's amazing. But this is the part I want to share with you. That's so much fun. So I use um, a trans uh, AI transcription service called Otter. If you've ever heard of it, and I'll put often sessions in order and it gets a lot of things wrong. No question about it. It gets <laughs> a lot of things wrong, but it, it's, I still find it valuable even without correcting it word for word, because I can find things, I can search for things, I can get gists of ideas and paragraphs. Listen to what happened, Shane. You know, I use this otter. I've used it for many years. And when I put in, you know, my name is in there and Otter can often recognize my voice, but I'll put in the, uh, the, the first name and the last initial of the person who I'm doing a session with, client, right? And so it says, it calls them speaker one when, um, when of course they don't know, you know, and you have to tag them. And then when I tag them, it comes up this really long list of stuff, right? I put that whole combined session into Otter to get a transcription of it. And when it came back, I had done many things with some of the other people. All on its own, I had never, ever transcribed anything Dolores had done using Otter. Her name showed up as the speaker. What? There's no, there's wow. no way that it could decide that. And then here's the, here's the more interesting thing too. In the pre-session when I was talking about what Dolores said or afterwards when we were recapping what was going on, Otter would pick up what I was saying and attribute it to Dolores and give it to her. Do you follow me? I was speaking. Right. And, and it labeled it Dolores. And Otter, right. Yes. That's amazing. I know. And I'm, I'm just like, where did that even come from? How did that even happen? And it's not even my, even if you were to say, oh, you probably just forgot and it, it recognized her voice. Even if you said, I never put it in there th that way. I mean, I always use first names and last names. Anyway, it's just interesting. Uh, just Dolores, I think truly has, she has not completely, you know, she still has a foot in this world. Oh yeah, uh, definitely. And, and I think that's probably been her life plan from the very, very beginning. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. And I never even answered your question because I talked about that. Um, that actually comes to now. She she hasn't actually given me direct messages like that one. But I've had a sneaking suspicion that when I have intuitive things that come to mind, like one time, like so much of the magic happens, uh, especially you can see this happen uh, in sessions. That's why I'm so happy that I've gotten into this. But the magic seems to happen in the randomness, right? So yeah. sometimes I'll just have a thought, you know, like, ask them what the first childhood memory that pops in their head is, right? It's like, that's out of the, I didn't think of that. It just pops in my head, you know? And then I say that, and then that brings up this random thought in the client that means something. And I have a feeling a lot of times that's Dolores, even though she doesn't come through as Dolores, but I think she's helping me in a way to sort of help someone get deeper or get at an issue that they're having. Because then it turns out that, you know, a traumatic memory came up that they forgot about it you know it wasn't a traumatic event it was just where they were treated a certain way and felt a certain way and it was it had like lasting effects on it so um but it wasn't traumatic like you know abuse or something it was just sort of a mental thing that they had kind of gotten themselves into and then forgot about but it was still affecting them now so a lot of times we carry so much baggage around that 
we have no idea about. And I don't know if this happens to you, but do you notice that you get a lot of people? It's almost like everyone that comes to me, I can relate with what's going on with them. It's like universe is sending me someone with a parallel issue so that I can see it from a different perspective and help myself. So for me, this whole thing, even though the sessions are great to have one, for me being a practitioner, I've learned so much. I've grown exponentially from from yeah. what it was before, you know, because like not only are you learning with your own issues, you're learning by helping others and the intuition that comes through to to have yeah. you help others and whatever they get in their session turns around to benefit me as well. So it's like a dream job, you know, and I want to mention that like if anybody <laughs> wants to get into this, I recommend getting into it, even if you just plan on having it like a tool that you use with your family and maybe you don't want to, you know, start a business or whatever, but it's an excellent tool to learn. And I've got a link down in the description below with a, uh, a discount. So uh, for me, it was one of the smartest, best choices I made. And it even came up in my chart, you know, my astrology person, uh, Lori really? Lillian said the asteroid hypno came into my chart in 2017, just when Dolores came into my awareness and all of this stuff started to unfold. Wow. wow. I love that you brought up the things that you don't even know. You know, if we realized, especially adults, so when if we realize what sometimes the smallest thing we do or say to a child, how long that can affect them. Mm -hmm. I recently did a session with a woman who <clears throat> all and she didn't even know this either. It came up in the session. So in BQH, you know, we have a few uh, ways of talking about how to operate in a session. And one way is to look for the root cause, you know, looking for the root cause. And sometimes the root cause is not what you think, not what you think at all. And this woman had a lifetime of, um, of issues in relationships and it stemmed from, are you ready for this? She was something like in first or second grade, there were children in, um, in, in the classroom, a child next to her was doing something tiny naughty thing loud gotten into something or whatever and the teacher looked over and attributed this small misbehavior to the other child to this my client the woman and put her out in the hallway and she had to sit out in the hallway her whole life was affected by this thing it was 15 or 20 minutes you know in this in this whole scenario of this classroom and this teacher but being um, wrongly accused as this little kid followed her her whole life, affected every relationship she had at the end. I, we, both of us were absolutely floored, but it, it changed something within her. And after that, um, everything was seen through that lens. So for BQH, going back to that, finding that and then dealing with it at that point sometimes then cleans up that timeline all the way forward and it's like a breath of fresh air absolutely yeah it's amazing that the smallest things but when a when a child is they're so impressionable things matter so much to them and that had to be awful being accused i mean that would be the equivalent of going to, to jail for something you didn't do as an right? adult right so it's yeah. like that had yeah. to uh, impact her. And, and it's like one of those things, like I was just mentioning that you can just totally forget about, you know, until you get yeah. in a session and then all of a sudden it's like obviously there and obviously causing issues, you know? Yeah. yeah. I talk about this one a lot, but I had another man. It's the same thing. He's like, I'm just so angry. I'm so angry all the time. I'm just so angry. And I've been going to psychotherapy. I remember this so well for 20 years, for 20 years. And nothing, it's never worked. And I keep trying to, I keep working on my issues. Well, we go to the root cause. It's that easy in one afternoon. I mean, for this particular session anyway. Right, right. You know what the root cause was? I mean, and this gets just, it might be a little TMI, but it works out well. Um, he actually was four years old and he had to be circumcised at four because of physical issues because he was not circumcised at birth for whatever reason. And he completely had forgotten about the whole thing all the way. But it was so traumatic at four and he was under the bed and he was hiding under the bed in the hospital and his mother and his doctor and the nurse, they were all pulling him out, you know, by his leg and all of oh that. And they were holding him down and then giving him anesthesia and all of that to calm him down and everything. And he felt so betrayed and so angry by his own mother that, that she was pulling him out. 
So what did we do in this session? It was absolutely brilliant. We basically said, you know, how can we resolve this? How can we neutralize it? And so we had, because the BQH is so, um, you know, it's so imaginative and it's so creative and it's so flexible. So what we had was we had the adult version of, of that man come underneath the bed to the four-year-old, sit with him, put him in his lap and tell him, you know, this is actually going to be fine and it's going to fix something that's really hurting you right now. And I promise you it's all. And they so like the the adult and the child fixed it under the bed and he woke up and everything changed for him. He had no recollection of this. That's amazing. But, I've yeah. seen this happen quite a bit where people go back and in fact, I'll do it intuitively sometimes if someone has some childhood trauma, you know, but no one knows you like you. So it's the perfect person to go back and visit yourself and comfort yourself in that moment. And this is so powerful of a tool. I would have never, you know, imagined, I could have never imagined it would be so powerful, but it is. And people come out feeling so much lighter from things like this. It's amazing the small things we carry around, right? I know, I know. People say, I don't have any baggage. Oh yeah, you do. If you're, <laughs> if you're a human, you have it. You really, really do. Shane, I'm noticing your hat, 1111. Oh yeah. I love that. This started for me with my mom. Her birthday was November 11th. So she passed away when I was 19 and I didn't know anything about synchronicity at the time, you know, but I'd see 1111 on the clock and I felt like she was saying hello. So it was only, you know, probably 2017 that I realized like synchronicity was a thing because I started seeing all these repeating numbers everywhere. And I'm like, what's going on? You know, and it gets to a point where you just can't help but notice them everywhere. And so, right. yeah, then I realized that's like one of the signs of waking up that you start seeing these little signposts to like a little wink from universe. You know, I was, I had a rough day yesterday. I was like working on the sewer pipe all day long and I was sitting oh. in the war out and, and I was like, Oh, what time is it even? And I clicked it and it said two, 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 you know, it's kind of like universe in that moment winking at me like, it's okay. You know, this, you're this, all right. This, yeah, it's all right. It's just one of you those things going. you got to deal with. <laughs> You know, my brother um, died in 1989, and shortly before his death, he was showing me on his in digital clocks, 1989, there weren't that many digital clocks around. Uh, th there were here and there. And and he was talking to me, and he said, have you ever noticed that on the on the clock, it says 1111 on the clock, like all the time, like 111 or 1111, and you're always looking at it, it's always 1111. <laughs> and see, at the time, though, I didn't, right? Right. Because he was awake and I wasn't. Right. And I, I felt the same way. When I would see 1111, I thought it was him saying hello until I got clued in right. to what that really, really was. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. So yeah. we had, but you know, even the kids talk about other people noticing uh, these synchronicities, like they'll be having a conversation and maybe TikTok's playing in the background and it, it par parrots what they're saying or yeah. the TV will, you know, that's all these, they're like, you know, freaking out, like, what's, you know, what are the chances? But it's happening more and more. And I think these synchronicities are just going to continue to increase until it's like overwhelmingly. I think this is kind of part of the singularity and what Dolores Cannon talked about, the split. You know, it's like as things become more harmonized and the other frequencies fall away, I think we're going to see more of this in the zone moment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? One time I was actually in a grocery store parking lot talking to Cynthia Sue Larson and she was talking to me about what happened with that dried rose in her in her purse. And, and a lot of that, it, it, she was just telling me about the story before she had shared it, I guess, more publicly. And she goes, she said something along the line of, what are the chances? What are the chances that this rose would just drop? And do you know, right as she said this, and it's winter and it's cold, I think, when she was talking to me about this. Just at that time, a woman walked right in front of my car holding a dozen red roses, just like <laughs> right in front of me. She says, what are the chances? And I'm, <laughs> I'm like, well. <laughs> don't you love that? I love the compounding so synchronicities like yeah. that. Yeah, I don't know how many. Lifting. I don't know how many times I've mentioned synchronicity or we're talking about, and then you look down at the clock because you're talking about it, and it's a synchronistic number on the clock, you know, and it's like yeah. one of those things. You know, actually, it would be 333 in New York right now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Two, three, four. Yes. So, yeah, we're recording this on the uh, the 26th. It's actually going to be released later today, so it's fresh off the press. 
for you guys. Fantastic. Um, you get right on it, don't you, Shane? Yeah, I try to. As long as I don't have to edit it, I can just post it right up there. So sure. it should be good. I didn't have anything to show other than that flyer for the event. Speaking of which, yeah. you know, Dolores came into my awareness because when I first, in the beginning of 2017, the first half, I was looking around for Mandela Effect stuff, and she had a really popular video. That was, you know, it's the one where she's talking about the split happening in the new earth and and like some people over here would be like oh poor thing died thinking she was you know gonna this was gonna happen and then on this side you know you know it's like two different realities and i think the mandela effect really is it, it seemed like it's come through sessions anyway that this is sort of a byproduct some of it is sort of a um a byproduct of the split happening and some of it's actually uh, intelligent nods from the universe sort of like a wink yeah. to wake you up gentle taps on yeah. the aquarium glass if you will you know what i mean yeah. of our reality um yeah. have you had any stuff come through uh with the mandela effect and its cause and or different causes oh, gosh. it's in sessions well mostly it's timeline things you know right. it's it's understanding uh when when it has been addressed it's it's mostly the shifting and the shifting. And even Dolores said this, you know, in her teachings, she would say, every decision you make, if you turn right or left, when you go out of your driveway, if you're going to take this route to work or that route to work, if you're going to choose a ham and cheese over, you know, a cheese pizza for lunch, it doesn't matter what it is. Every single choice splits you off into a different reality. Mm -hmm. And 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 she made it you know interesting to listen to but so but it's really every single second in a way yeah when you know we we make these pronouncements we say things like we're multidimensional and we're part of the infinite you know life force of creativity and going out there well multidimensional infinite well that means there are all those choices all those splits all those different lines and and yes it's hard for a human brain to sort of comprehend that. But I think what I love about the Mandela effect is because people are so, I mean, if you hadn't noticed before, please notice now how tribal humans are, you know, in the last, in the last four years, right? Totally, yeah. I mean, if you didn't notice it before, it should be very evident right now. But one of the things I find absolutely uh, fascinating about this is um, when you can talk about, especially some of the cultural ones, did it this morning in, in my workout. I have a, a, a couple workout partners and I had seen Cynthia Sue's post about Publishers Clearinghouse, you know, and we, we talk a lot when we work out to distract ourselves, you know, right. keep us working out so we don't have to pay any attention. So we were bringing this up and, and I said, do you remember Ed McMahon? Oh yeah. Do you remember him giving the, the you know, the check and Publishers Clearinghouse? Oh yeah. I remember all that that doesn't actually exist in this timeline. And they're just like, they've listened to me say these things before, but they really just stopped. They were like, well, yes, it did. It in like, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Not where we are currently. It just doesn't. And I think what it is, is it's kind of almost a, it's a non-threatening way to kind of understand how much really is malleable and how much really does change and by doing things like having a BQH session, you know, sometimes it might just be ham and cheese or a cheese pizza, but sometimes having a, a session where you really intend to make some changes, I think that's one of the ways we're given an opportunity to think, yeah, things really can shift. They really can change. If those other things can change, so can so can some of these bigger things or things that might make my life better. That's one of the reasons I'm so excited we're going to be there with Cynthia Sue Larson, because she's been after this for like three decades or more talking about shifting your reality and jumping into a different timeline. And so much of this is about taking control and realizing how much our intentions really control where we're going. And I wanted to go back to Ed McMahon really fast because those people might not have heard, but in this reality, that never happened anymore. Ed McMahon never the handed out check. the checks that we remember, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, I had so many memories. I was like, 
Do they really take that big check to the bank? Do they give them a smaller check? Right. Do they print up a new check every time or just stick their name on there? Does somebody in the car hold it for Ed? And they always come out with balloons. And I mean, yeah. I remember having all of these kind of random thoughts about seeing this on TV. And yeah, and it's not real. Now, 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 this is probably one of the best Mandela effects for residue because it's like none of the residue would have existed if he if the centerpiece which is no longer there didn't happen so like there was this show where they were gonna like troll this whole family and make the person think that they won a whole bunch of money and they were just gonna spend it all on themselves and they have ed mcmahon play the part of bringing out the big check why would they ever do that if he wasn't known for the guy that hands out the big check and that happened like in you know the 2000s so it was well after you know, the eighties when we remember, wow. cause I remember like watching, you know, the price is right and things like that. Sure. That's back when I sure. remember I'm doing it. It was like, I was only like 10, 12 years old at the time. You know what I mean? When I first started seeing him handing out the big checks and I remember the wow. envelope coming. So now he's not with publishers clearing house. He's with American family publishers. And I'm like, what, <laughs> what's going yeah. on here? So yeah, this is definitely a different reality. And that's a really good example because he, de he didn't even hand out the big checks with the company he really was with. So he never handed out the big checks except on TV shows where he was making fun of the fact that that's what he did in the 80s, right? It's like everything's pointing to the fact that he used to do wow. it. It's almost like the, the kitchen table's gone and all the food and people are sitting around. Somebody's like, we used to have a table here, you know? <laughs> Strange. Wow, Very strange. Shane, Shane, you want to um, um, define residue for my my audience who might not know what residue is? Right. So residue is things that that support the idea of people's memories and the way they remember things being. So if, uh, for instance, uh, well, we'll just use this one as an example. You know, he's handing out these big checks. That's that's sort of uh, reminiscent of how he handed out the big check. So we call it residue of the other reality. It's like a little bit of the other reality remains. And you can get a little bit of that in uh, all sorts of ways. Uh, lyrics of songs, you might have the lyrics of the song change, but you'll come across a cover song where somebody's singing it and they'll sing it the way you remember it because they didn't, they weren't reading the lyrics. So that, that kind of gets to the heart of what I think is happening. Um, and I haven't had it proven wrong yet. So it's just sort of, sort of a mental thought for people to have when you see it happen. Uh, is residue created by consciousness? Um, I think we remember and we can carry something over into this reality from another reality, but it's consciousness that does that. So for instance, and I always use this because I saw a Febreze label that someone wrote out like on a big star with uh, a Sharpie and they wrote it in the original way. And I said, see how it didn't get changed because they knew what it was spelled like. They spelled it out. They put the price on there. Now, if they had gone into the computer and printed out a label, that label would have changed because it has nothing to do with consciousness. It has to do with what can be hacked, the, the reality, right. right? So I feel right. like um, like when we see the thinker statue and you've got the thinker that's changed, but you got like 16 softball students or players, <laughs> little kids all have their fists to their forehead. It's like nobody can see what the statue looks like. No, it's because uh -huh. it was human consciousness carried over. Right. But the matter or, you know, if you will, the matter changed, but the people did it. You know. Yeah. Hey, Shane, what do you think about, and I really wonder about some of these speakers, if any of them, will, I, there's so many, I can't wait. I mean, so many of those names are new for me. And I'm wondering, um, what do you think about AI and people because I think, you know, we're being so fooled in some ways about some things. I'm almost a little concerned that the concept of AI will have people or some people who might be on the edge of waking up, step back away from it and just say, no, nah, that just must be AI. What do you think about some of that? I have definitely seen some muddying of the water since I r realized the Mandela effect was happening. So much stuff's going on now. So many fake videos of people with old phones showing that they can see the old way something was through the phone. And yeah. there's so much deep fake stuff going on that it, it seems like information just like across the board is just getting so murky. You know what I mean? It's like... Yeah. So much is just made up out of anything. And I think that's sort of why we have to go within. That's why BQH is so powerful, because you're getting your information through your heart, through your connection to source. 
not anywhere else. And I think the more we move forward, the more we're not going to be able to trust external sources. In fact, external sources, we've seen this in the last few years, right? You could have trusted an external source and it cost you your life in the last few years, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it, And then there was the people that trusted their intuition. I, I know they're saying that, but I feel this and I'm going to go with that. And I say, moving forward, we have to learn to operate from the heart, uh, not out of fear, but out of excitement and love and peace and things like yes. that, you know? So uh, it yeah. seems like the external is pushing fear on us and we can find that calm peace within and be guided by that rather than yeah. sort of herded around by fear on the internet, right? It's almost like everyone's being herded by fear, you know? It's so true, that's so true. You know, the use of the word expert, there was, um, I was asked to be part of some sort of panel somewhere and, and they kept using the word experts and experts, you know, we're getting the experts in the field. And I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit triggered by that word right now. <laughs> right. I don't want, I don't, I, don't, I kind of issue it. I, it for me, it's like, please don't call me an expert. Um, you know, I, I'm very happy to talk about how long I've done this and all of my adventures and everything, but I absolutely love getting together with people who are brand new at this because why? Their intention, their enthusiasm, their heart, their desire, they're waking up to what's going on and that they can help other people. It's so beautiful and it's so um, nourishing to me. I don't care that I've done this many and but, you know, it, I think that's the old way of looking at a lot of things. It's like, don't talk to me about how much you know and how many of these things and how many years and, and how many clients you've ever had. Talk to me about what excites your heart, right? What really feels good. And those are the things that I that I find, um, you know, exciting to focus upon in continuing to do this work. A, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people will be in the community and they'll learn a little and then they'll sort of uh, branch off and do their own thing and focus only in on themselves. That's, um, that's the human way a lot of times. And, and, and okay, that's fine. But I will never be one of those people because I see what we do through the eyes of the new people all the time, you know, and I, and it keeps me humble and it keeps me in the place of, of remaining excited. And to this day, even after, gosh, coming up on 17 years of doing this exact kind of work and healing work more than 20, um, I'm still so thrilled to talk about people or talk to people who are just now starting their first sessions or their first questions. And I think sometimes they think, oh, I must be bored with that. And it, it just couldn't be further from the truth, you know, it, it just couldn't because watching them um, and, and ask the really great questions, you know, that, that, that help us all see this deeper and, and, and wider. It's yeah, a beautiful thing. Absolutely. While you're, ta while we're talking about sessions, let's talk about expectations because I think a lot of people go into sessions feeling like it. And I think a lot of it's Hollywood, to be honest with you, you know, like you're going to go into this exactly. place, you're going to be like, in a trance, you're going to be gone. You're not going to remember anything of what's going on. And, and it's just not like that, you know? And I think people get an idea that everyone's a somnambulist when they go into a session. And that's really such a small, it's less than a percent, I would say, out of all the clients I've done, you just don't come across an ambulance too often. And, and the, just for less people who now don't than know, ever, I think. let's, let's I think. define that really fast. A, a somnambulist is someone who sort of clicks out there. They go into this trance and, they have no recollection of the session until after. And I think a lot of people think everyone has that sort of a session, but it's really not like that at all. For for people, it's they're there. They're even more focused a lot of times than you would if in a normal conversation. So instead of being sleepy or sort of drifting into some other place, you become like so hyper focused. focused. Yeah, hyper focused. Hyper yeah. And, uh, and you're able to connect and see things so much clearer. It's like putting glasses on. So... It's not like drifting off into somewhere else into a trance. It's actually like focusing in and just allowing things to flow through. And as practitioners, that's our job to help that flow. Because, you know, a lot of times we can get in our mind and we can control the images that pop in our mind by the things we think about. So, um, yeah, it's, it's like surfing the waves or whatever. So that's what's cool, though, is like everybody gets something out of a session. It's just how deep can you go in um, to, to acquire more information, but every level you get information and it's just yeah. like the more you can move out of the way. And that's sort of the trick. 
you know? Exactly, exactly. And that's why your relationship with your practitioner, how comfortable you are with them is really everything. I've learned that in trading sessions with others throughout the years. And the more comfortable I am with whoever is right there with me, you know, the flow is much, it's, it's much flowier, you know, yeah. let's, let's <laughs> just say, you know, though, <clears throat> Shane, I have to, uh, I have to be upfront about this, uh, you know, this, everybody's a somnambulist. This comes straight from Dolores Cannon. You know, she said it over and over and over again. I take my clients to the somnambulistic state of trance. That's where well, I thought did. at first. Yeah, I thought. Uh, I, of course, we right. all did. And she is the one who perpetuated this. And I think, sorry, Dolores, I know. Um, I think it's one of the reasons I was one of her demonstration subjects, because I was absolutely there and I was absolutely there. I was both. I was observing what was going on and I was this caveman. And the very first thing Dolores said to me, of course, this is 2008. When I sat up, she was like, well, how much do you remember? I'm like, I remember everything. And she actually tried to tamp that down for the classroom's benefit. She was like, oh, I don't think you remember as much as you say. And in my head, I'm thinking, I remember even more than what I said. And try me, test me. <laughs> I mean, I was really cheeky, but I think I asked the kind of questions I mean, look, she kept me around all those years, all the way till she passed. So I didn't, I didn't upset her too much. Here's what I think uh, and how and why this, this ended up being this way. I think when Dolores was first doing this, when she was first experimenting in this, even in the 60s, you know, I went, remember, she was carrying around a tape recorder for her husband, who was the main hypnotist. Real to real thing. She was carrying around a suitcase, you know, to, to help record these things. Um, I think more people were closer to somnambulistic state of trance. Why? I don't think humanity was as awake as they are now. So I think that was more. And I think Dolores was very, um, she streamlined things. She made things simple, as simple as she could, even though things were more complex in her own world, when she was presenting these ideas to people, she distilled them down to what she thought was the simplest, most easiest way to understand what was going on here. So people were comforted by that, I think, in part. And so I think it just perpetuated. And I love that you even brought this up because one of the only um, surviving videos that Dolores and I did together uh, was... Um, expectations Dolores Cannon on expectations <laughs> and it's on my channel and she speaks we do this together and it took me Shane I asked her I asked her for years to do this video and she didn't want to do it and she finally did I said Dolores you're making it harder for us because what people out there are are concluding is that you know what you're doing and we don't but you taught us and we're doing exactly what you told us and the first few months of the support form all the way back then was us going, what are we doing wrong? Because not all of our clients are going to the synambulistic state until we realized, you know, that's happening to her too. Um, she's not really talking about it and she didn't really have to and she had command of her audience. Uh, but it's a misnomer and it's a misnomer now more than, in, than, than ever because we can accept things like, yeah, I, I was on that planet. Or I, I'm this little orb that's flying around over here in this other, you know, reality. You know, it, you couldn't have done that in the 60s and 70s without somebody thinking they were crazy or you were crazy, right? That's a very good point. And I have noticed a lot of the people that have a good connection already, they um, never seem to be somnambulous. They seem to um, just have a clear connection and and uh, strengthen the connection they already have. So I don't know, I guess it is sort of a way to get us out of the way sometimes, you know, and yeah, you know, yeah. when it needs to be. But I, the other thing that happens, you know, you can see it with, you know, the videos I put out or maybe Alba Wyman. Well, she actually had a section on, on the training that was great as far as we were talking about recording in person. Um, and she's got this great section within the course, the VQH course of showing you how to record in person. Um, but yeah, she, uh, I think, you know, we put out the best of the best. We put out the ones that are going to have a good message that needs to be shared with the audience. 
Dolores wrote books from the Sonambulist that she came across. She didn't write a book from every single person, you know, and then the other books, it was like little, uh, you would have different people that she had a session with and different things that came through or whatever. But even that, you know, we're going to see the best of the best. There's no reason to show someone that had a difficult time connecting or relaxing right. or whatever. So just by, you know, what gets out there, you can feel like, oh, 100 percent, you're going to get something you're going to, you know. And it just might be something personal to you. It might not be something for the whole world. It might be you're shown something small that has a, a sort of a butterfly effect. You know, we were talking about little things we've carried around that affect the way our choices we make and the way we, you know, just handle life in general. And those little things have to be dealt with a lot of times before you can move on to the other stuff. So every session is so completely different. And I'm so glad it's orchestrated from the higher realms. And I tell my clients, it's not like, I have no idea. Just expect that, you know, your journey is being prepared on the higher realms and you'll, you can have your questions, but you're going to get, you know, whatever you're needing at this specific moment, you know, just be open to whatever and like release the expectations. And you know what? It's, it's like everybody gets what they need and it's such a different uh, session. Every single one is unique, even with the same client, you know, the same client can Absolutely have completely true. different sessions. <laughs> Absolutely true. You know, one of the things that, that I like to, to say about this expectation, because people are like, I'm still here, you know, like you were saying, you know, I'm still here. Yes, you are still here. Uh, I think a lot of people truly think that they're going to be like taken over, you know, like completely taken over. Mm -hmm. And and the reality is, if that were to happen to you, you'd be scared to death. It would be horrifying for you. It really that that is not that is not a pleasant feeling. Not that I know what that is. But that's, it's like, um, you really don't want that. And so one of the ways, one of the descriptions, so for you people out there who are getting ready to do a BQH or a QHHT session or anything like this, um, what, you, what you think about, like when your practitioner says, you know, let's talk to your higher self, um, in, you know, may I speak to your higher self or asks questions of the, the spirit guides or the wisdom team. You if you think about this, you have to lend your voice to them. So think of it that way. You're there. Their energy is there. But if anybody wants to hear anything, <clears throat> excuse me, it's an interesting place for my throat to kind of <laughs> <laughs> right? need to be clear. If anybody needs to say anything, your voice has to be used. This is how we're, we're communicating, doing, doing some of this. Although, you know, like I said, I, I've had sessions where nothing was said. I've had sessions where the client says, I, you know, I can't say anything, but I'm seeing like a vignette of objects. I'm like, oh, well, tell me what the objects are. Well, there's a record player and a, a man with a pipe and all this stuff. And so we have this, you know, then we can decode that. So the information comes in a lot of different ways. And one, which was a couple of years ago, which I just thought was absolutely fascinating, was a woman who now... Of course, think about it this way. She was a dancer. This was a dancer who had a, a session. And when and she had this beautiful session, and when it came time to talk to her higher self, every single question was answered like this. Wow. With, with body movement. And and you know, and I'm going, okay. And and what I'm what I'm asking and what was given assurance to me was that the conscious mind of the client was receiving and understanding the communication that was happening, even though I'm just watching basically her dance. That's amazing. <laughs> just laying there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways that, that information can be given to you. Yeah, I've seen movement come through a lot. And movement can be, we don't realize this, but like on the, on the you know, on a very low volume level, our muscles are making different frequency noises and things like that. I've had like different muscle twitches, like in my toes. And I'm like, what's going on there? Why am I like inadvertently doing that or tensing up muscles or whatever? So I think sometimes, um, you know, we're, we're getting in that flow. It came through once that even my movement like this, sometimes when I'm getting in a meditative state creates yeah. this Doppler effect with yes. your heart. And it allows you to get a clear signal through your heart because the external signals yes. begin to wobble, but your heart signal doesn't, right? And I'm like, Brilliant. oh, it's, it's, but it happened intuitively, right? So it's like, I always yeah. tell people, trust it. If you feel like moving your hands while you're talking, just start doing that, you know? Brilliant. 
So um, one of the things, one of the reasons I'm in this house right now, this is my childhood home that we've turned into sort of my office space, my therapy space, but also this is where we hold the BQH immersion classes. But what I'm remembering right now is the last immersion class that we had, I was giving a presentation more and more about the understanding of water, you know, when we use this phrase a lot, flow a lot, but, and how water is part of this. But what I want to bring up is, you know, the fascia, that, that thin covering that's over all of our muscles. Sheen, did you know that every fiber in your fascia is covered by a sleeve of water and that there are theories that that is where many of our memories are actually held is within our fascia and within those sleeves of water? Isn't that crazy? Because, and think about how often... Um, massage therapists will help clients release right. bottled up emotions and trauma. Totally. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> and just that think is... about that. We don't, we don't know the beginning of our body. I don't think, you know, I mean, we're, we're learning more and more, but uh, that kinda... one really, really it struck me as incredible. And it reminds me of how much, you know, our intentions, you know, they have the water, Dr. Emoto with the water crystals and how our thoughts affect water. And there's the rice experiment where you can put hate on one thing of rice and love on the other one and, and project love and hate at each one of them. And the, the, the hate rice will actually begin to rot quicker than the love rice. And then I was like, how many relationships are people in? And they go to bed every night thinking mean things about their spouse right next to them. Like, jacking up their water and it's only going to make their relationship worse in the long run. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, why can't you just send loving thoughts and create love? And it's like, we'll do that with complete strangers. We'll just have this yeah. random judgment about someone, just their appearance. And then we'll just send, you know, bad vibes. So I think, you know, it's like so important to look at everyone and just realize that they're all water, right? Cause we're yep. majority water. So our effect, our, um, our intentions and our thoughts do affect those around us and, we should be aware of that, you know, and, and this is just another point you're saying, like it, we're completely our memories and everything could be. They say water has memory. There's memory held in water. So Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And actually, I, this plant is talking to me right now. It wants, it wants me to tell you a story. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, one of the reasons is um, another this idea of doing sessions online. So I did a session with this man a number of years ago. Now it's been. And he's one of the very few, but there's been a couple of times where the, the, I, I got disconnected. The connection was disconnected. And, and, you know, we prepare for that. We prepare the client, we prepare the practitioner, and I just followed my own procedures and I'm waiting for the reconnection. And it wasn't immediate. It was a couple minutes, you know, and, you know, you're just really wondering what's going on for those couple of minutes. So the situation was the man had taken his laptop to the office. It was a weekend. And he said, I have privacy here. There's too many people at my house. Nobody's at the office this weekend. I'm going to do my session in my office on my sofa. Well, he was too far away from the router. And, and there was some, some issue. And when it, it finally disconnected, because there had been some hanging up, he got himself up. He, he understood what was going on. He took his computer over to um, the central part of the office. He brought a, a cushion off of his sofa and he just laid on the floor with his computer closer to the router. Where he laid on the floor happened to have like a plant like this and like he's laying and, and the plant is over it. Do you know, first of all, the session was beautiful. It was absolutely interrupted. And then we asked, and I always ask if and when there's interruptions, why, you know, why was it interrupted? Do you know it was all about the plant? And it was all about how he wasn't connected, wasn't grounded enough. He didn't have enough water. He didn't have enough living things around him. He was always connected to this hardware and the electronics and stuff. And his, um, his uh, incoherent energy was part of the reason mm -hmm. that it kept um, dropping off the signal. And the plant was instrumental in the keeping the connection going so we could do the session. And so much of it was about get your ass outside. <laughs> <laughs> Just get outside and do some, some things outside and get your feet on the ground and, and do some things with green things. And the plant 
the potted plant in the in the office ended up being a huge part of the session. Isn't that crazy? How, you could make this up if you tried. That's awesome. And that actually reminds me of, it seems like the worst possible situation would be to lose a connection with a somnambulist, but that's exactly how it happened one time for me. And I, and I didn't even know the lady was a somnambulist because it was my first session with her, but, uh, it lost connection. I, I asked for a response and I didn't get one. And, you know, and then I looked and saw it, it hung up. So, uh, I was about to call her back and she calls me and she's like, I'm so sorry. I fell asleep. I'm, she had no idea. <laughs> It's like they woke her up and had her call yeah. me right away. And it's like once you realize like you're not alone, it's not you and the client, it's you and the client and all of your guides working together. So, of course, they can wake her up and pull her out of it. It's not like she's going to be stuck in this trance state for the rest of her right. life or anything. Right. So, yeah, the guides woke her up and she called me back and completely, you know, and that was one of the two somnambulists I've worked with, you know. So I had a woman once who um, I've got this on my channel too. I actually have a video of this session. I don't post many of my, my videos, uh, my sessions, but this one is on there. Speaking of movement, she's being healed like this. I mean, she's rocking. They are moving her. And she's like, I'm not doing this. They're doing it for me. I was like, well, what does it feel like? She said, it's like somebody is pushing right here on my arm. Do you know that you can actually see an indentation in her arm? Like you see this happening in the video. Wow. It's crazy. And then her jaw, they worked on her jaw like this. And this was one of those healing sessions, Shane, where it just went on and on and on and on and on. And um, this was still in the early days of, of BQH, uh, just starting it, you know, just starting doing it online. And anyway, she was having a lot of healing and I was running up on a time crunch. I think it might dad's caregiver or something was happening. I, it, I it was, I was going to have to shut this down. I kept checking in and the, their healing guides, the, the higher self said, no, she just needs more healing. I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> you know, I, I gotta go. I've never done this before. Not in all these years, but I gotta go. And, and you know what they said? They said, oh, she'll be fine. Just leave her here. She's sitting here on the sofa like this. I'm like, and I'm thinking about this and I'm like, okay, she'll be fine. Then what will happen when you're done healing? She's going to take a nap. Okay. Will she call me as soon as she wakes up? Oh, yes, we will have her call you as soon as she wakes up. And it was a good two hours later. Uh, but it was fantastic. And I have to say, you know, being trained by Dolores, of course, and being, you know, her greatest concern was the care of the client. Mm -hmm. Her greatest concern. That's where a lot of this don't do it online stuff came because Dolores Cannon could not conceive of this yet. Yeah, just I so people know, QHHT yes. has to be done in person. You can't do it online. Yep. In fact, they'll yep, kick you out totally. of the, the board if you're. Yes, they yeah. will. Yes, they will. And, you know, it's kind of crazy because I used to ask Dolores or people would ask, well, why not? What, you know, what could go wrong? And really, the only thing she would ever say was, well, people like she would tell the story about this man who um, came came off the cloud, like burning on a stake, or maybe he was being raped. One, I, I always get confused which which one it is as a woman um, in, in that lifetime. And it was a demonstration subject that caused quite a ruckus at the hotel. But it wasn't dangerous. It just was noisy, right? I mean, we've we talked a lot, a lot about it, even in the classrooms, you know, well, what's the worst? Well, they'll just go to sleep, you know? So, uh, you know, well, what, what do you really think's gonna, if they're on their sofa or in their bed and they're just gonna go to sleep, even if something awful were to happen, a fire, well, if you're asleep and the fire alarm goes off, you wake up, you know, this isn't, you know, this isn't medication. This is just, you know, consciousness. So I understand where that where that came from. And, and I have to tell you, it was a little disconcerting. I mean, hanging up and I, I was very much looking forward to having her uh, call me back. Uh, but she actually drove through town uh, not terribly long after that. And we sat and talked about it. And then I showed clips of it. And that's what's on the, the YouTube channel. So, yeah, that was my very first time. I've done it since then. I've done it two other times. 
um, with the same sort of thing. You know, the conscious mind knows that we're doing this. Yes, she really needs to stay in this state right now with this going on and she's just going to go to sleep afterwards. Um, so I think it's been about three different times I've done that now. Right. Wow. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of people look like they just came out of deep sleep. <laughs> they go so right? deep. Right, and it takes right, them a little yeah. bit to get back into it. I think that's why. And, I, you know, I totally get um, Dolores thinking like you you um, saying that you might not remember everything, you know, because so many times, even in my session, listening back to it, I was like, oh, my goodness, I forgot about this. It's not like you weren't there the first time. It's just that so much happens that you can forget little things and they don't pop up until somebody brings it up. Like Dolores could have said, well, do you remember blah, 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 and you would have remembered everything. But exactly. without being cued in on that, you might not, it might not have came into your awareness until re-listening to it again. But like for me, I was there for everything. It, was, it wasn't like I heard something that was a surprise to me, you know, like I didn't hear this. I don't remember this, but it was like, oh, I'd forgotten I, this kind of, you know, like I, I did exactly remember it at one point, you know. So, yeah. And I think yeah. for most people, it's like that. And, and you want to be there. You want to be aware sure. of what's going on, you know, because and, and I got to tell you, the people that I know that are synambulists don't like it. You know, I wish they no, liked they it more. <laughs> no, I know a lot of people think that's the only thing that can make it real that they, you know, that it's pure that way. And I'm telling you, those are the people who want to listen to their session the least. They, they're they the ones who are weirded out by it. It's like, you know, I mean, I hate to kind of bring this ugly part up, but it's almost like, you know, if somebody slipped you a rohypnol or something. Right, yeah. You feel like you've been out of control and you don't like it. What did I say? What did that, what was, the, and, and people are so icky about that for the most part. Um, somnambulism isn't, isn't a goal, a worthy goal for most people, I don't think. And that's one reason, certainly. It can certainly be interesting, but, you know, and it's interesting when stuff comes through that the people don't agree with. So sometimes that can happen. So it's like, (laughs) yeah, of course, they're not going to like it if they're saying things they don't just they don't they don't agree with or disagree with. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, that reminds me of there's a there's a great portion of sessions more in earlier days than now. But I've had a great number of sessions where people remembered absolutely everything about like the past life, the experience Mm -hmm. part. And absolutely nothing about the subsequent talking to the higher self. Oh, wow. they have That's yeah. Good. It's like their their conscious mind was able to hear that, but none of that. And then uh, some other ways that that really shows up. <clears throat> even I even show this in the um, in the BQH class in some of the in some of the webinars and some of the extra materials. But you know, if you if you work with video or sound at all, you know what the sound waves look like, right? Mm, And when you're quiet, you're like this. And when it's louder, it's like this. And if you take uh, sessions and you put them in audible or whatever, and you look at at the audio file, very often you can see like, this is the past life. And then this is the higher self. It typically is the one with the stronger signal, right? And I've even had clients who they're, um their accent changes have you had that yet no i haven't that's wild though yeah oh I've my def- gosh i've definitely had a change in in the intonation like you're saying like more authority yeah, yeah. you know louder from here right yeah. here yeah uh-huh yeah I, two that really come to mind one is a beautiful woman named joy joy was actually uh dolores's receptionist she was a she's since passed away but Joy, we'd done a couple of sessions and she would have her regular voice in the in the uh, past life part of the session. And when her higher self would come through, she she sounded Irish. Oh, wow. I've seen channelers a, do that. But yeah, not she was a session. southern. Yeah, she was a southern girl, you know, kind of Louisiana, southern <laughs> guy. She had kind of a southern drawl. And all of a sudden she'd be talking Irish. <laughs> And when she was her higher self. And then, then, oh, fantastic session I had with a man who was from New Jersey. He flew in to see me. Uh, this is when I was still doing QHHT. <clears throat> and he, you know, I lived in New Jersey for a little while. And when he walked in and he had that Jersey accent and it was, it was so strong. It was so strong. I mean, you know, I'm going to walk the dog to see the coffee, you know, I mean, that, <laughs> that real Jersey accent, <clears throat> but I, I'm used to that. I was used to that because I lived there for a while. And during his whole past life, he, he talked like that. And when he got to his higher self, 
perfect Oxford English, not a hint of an accent. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. It was actually astonishing. <laughs> That is crazy. Um, I wanted to talk about, uh, before we go, I'm saying we're a little over an hour, I wanted to talk about the solar flash because this comes up a lot in different sessions that I watch online. I think the first time I heard it was a, an Alice and Co video back when I was first getting into this. And, and then it's come through that, um, and it relates to the Mandela effect. That's why I wanted to talk to you about the white Oh, sun. Okay. So yeah. with the, the sessions and the different things I've, I've been able to come up with, the solar flash is happening right now. It's just Yeah. drawn out in a way that makes it feel like it's not happening. And we're kind of expecting like somebody took a picture and there's a flash, right? But if you look at the last, I think, I think Dolores said it's the speeding up started around like 2003 or 2004. So that speeding up is actually what's creating the, the brighter sun as well. And if you were to able to like see from 2004 until now in a time lapse, you would see the sun is flashing and it's going to continue to flash and get brighter and brighter. So it's like we're in the middle of the flash. So people that are like, it's not happening. It's like, or it didn't happen. Or when is it going to happen? It's like, it's happening right now. It's like on the cosmic scale, it's just drawn out so much that some people notice the sun's brighter, right? They don't realize it's the flash. They're just like, is the sun a different color? I remember it being yellow. Why is it so white? You know what I mean? And it's like. Yeah. Oh God, I love that so much. That's the, that's just perfect. And, and it's because, you know, you don't have like a, you don't have a, a, a monitor on your brain, although we've done that a little bit too, but you know, to, to see where you are and the information that's coming out. So some of the higher level information that's coming out if you are lending your voice to you know these other beings these other that have a different kind of perspective a different kind of timeline thing going on from their perspective especially because of the no time right it is a flash right right it is a flash and they do talk about it as this event like just like you said mm -hmm. and then then we bring it down to the slowing it back down thing And we're like, yeah, where is that? Ooh, and you know what that reminds me of too? There's there's this man who came um, to visit and he had had a lot of uh, ET experiences and a lot of very strange, very strange physical things happening. And one of the things that, one of the experiences that he had that I can relate to because of something that happened to me once where I noticed that the life forms around me We're like in slow motion like that. And I felt like this, right? So if you think about that, because he was like taken up in a craft and then put back down all when he was in the uh, bar scene. So imagine this, he's not even in bed or anything. He is sitting in a bar, it's in a pub in the UK. And he's like in a, he's like in one of those circular booths and he's smack in the middle with people on both sides of him. And it's a raucous, very loud things going on. And he's in the middle and they take him up into a craft, right? Right before they do, he notices everybody slows down and they take him up into a craft, do the things that they're doing, which is, you know, I'm not going to go into that here, <laughs> but they put him back and they put him back in this bar, but guess where they put him back? They put him back just outside of the table. So he's standing by the table and everybody is still in slow motion. And then all of a sudden they go back and they're animated. So from those people's perspective, he teleported. He, just, he blinks from this spot to this spot. So it's a time thing, you know, oh. as far as. Now, did they so, notice it? Oh, did yeah, I... they noticed it. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, they noticed it. Right. Well, I was wondering, because you see with Mandela effect, you know, you might yeah. notice that the nickel that we, I don't know, but I had somebody the other day watch my nickel video from like seven years ago. And they're like, my nickel just changed, you know, but back then, you know, I was like saying, there's no way we've had this nickel for 10 years, but now it's been like 17 years and it just popped up in his reality. So you can really see how the reality yeah. is very subjective. There's not really... Yes. As much as we wish it was an objective reality we could all agree yeah. on, our experience is all very so much. So I wouldn't have been surprised if no one noticed that he moved. It would have been like a Mandela effect where he was just always standing there to those people. You know what I mean? 
It you might have been. Know. Yeah. It might have been. He he had another experience where they took him up out of his his um friend's house. He was staying at his friend's house and he was upstairs in this um flat and they took him out of his bed and they put him back, but they put him back in uh the friend's younger sister's bedroom wearing her clothes. <laughs> And his clothes were nowhere to be found. And he had on this, these tight little non-fitting, ill-fitting girl clothes. And he wakes up in the middle of the night thinking he's going to be murdered by this, this friend's father because he can't explain what's going on here. Oh, wow. I mean, the whole thing, yeah, the whole thing is just is a little nutty like that. But I love that about the sun. It makes me wonder, you know, I used to work at a weather uh, station and I've, I have been itching to ask my old, old boss about the color of the sun, but it, it brings up this point about the Mandela effect that I know that you know about. And that is sometimes when, when the people who are too close to it, when they are right in it, they don't experience the Mandela effect. So I wonder if my friend, Mike Smith, never noticed that the sun was you know, more yeah. yellow, even though weather's been his life from the beginning, sort of like doctors don't recognize the heart some of the, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Cynthia Sue Larson calls that the quantum Zeno effect. And it's like, uh, it's sort of like you're locked into this reality because you're too involved with it. So if you're always flying a plane, then of course, geography probably won't seem like it's changed or or maybe if you're a brain surgeon, you might notice the heart's changed or something like that. If you're like always working on the brain and never looking at the heart, you might be like, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Definitely well, but you know, about like is that whole idea of a kidney punch, right? You know, we right. still call it a kidney punch. Right. But they've moved. Yeah. <laughs> They're up under the ribs now for you guys that don't know. They're no longer exposed. They've been moved up under the rib cage, which some people say the rib cage has even gotten a lot larger. Right. So. And that the floating rib is gone or yeah you don't remember that one see we yeah. always gotta we always gotta check because when i found out about the rainbow mountains i was so excited about them and then like a month late and there was only one location in china where the rainbow mountains were it was like three weeks or a month later i'm going to show somebody it and they're like in four locations three more locations so i was like what the heck i just looked at this it's like they're rainbow mountains popping up everywhere they're in china south america central america i think was another one but it was like you know, it's like our new world is coming into reality and no one notices. Yeah. And I think that might be how it is. One day it's like, I think so. We'll say, don't you remember, you know, the elite and all? And they're like, who are you talking about? The elite? Who's that? You know, they've always been gone. There's never been an Yay! elite. <laughs> you know? So I'm expecting I'm shifts like that. Mandela effect sort of shifts that make it seamless. But for those who are awake and aware, you'll just notice that the sun's brighter or there's rainbow mountains now, you know. Fantastic. I'm waiting for the giants to always have been around. The giants. The, the actual giants, like, you know, skulls this big kind of, kind right. of thing. Yeah. I listened to an archaeologist give a talk a number of years ago. She was this promising archaeologist who worked with a very famous, I'm not going to remember who, what his name was. And she, in, in, she had made a discovery that it was absolutely clear that there was like these out, huge humanoid bones that they were, um, you know, that they had come across and the whole thing was then, um, you know, hushed up and put away. And she just could, she would not participate in, in the, in the cover up. So of course she was canceled and I heard her on a random radio show. I I'm sorry that I don't remember her name because I wish I would have somehow written it down or committed it to memory because I wonder what's going on with her now. I've heard that story <laughs> but, before. I can't think of her name either. And uh, the, but, even the guy's name, I can't. The Garden of the Gods I, or... Yeah, oh, maybe. The, the and and of, I, think, yeah. I think that like under the Vatican, I think those bones are down there for anybody who has access to get down there to go see, actually. It's such a shame, too, to see science get turned into like a religion, basically, when like yeah, that's the heart that. of being. It's like you're an explorer of the sciences. So yeah. when you find something new, that's like 
the treasure you've been searching your whole life for. Right. And then for somebody to be like, shut up, that doesn't fit. That's what do they call it? They call it a anomalous artifacts. If it doesn't oh, fit God. the narrative, they throw it in yeah. this closet labeled anonymous, uh, ano anomalous artifacts. And that represents things that don't fit the narrative. And that room is full of all sorts of cool stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, spontaneous remission. It's another closet, isn't it? It's what it's probably what I'm going to be talking about a lot at, at the conference. Hey, let's um let's remind everyone when that is, right? Because because yeah, we want you people to show up. If you are interested in this stuff, if you are a quantum healing practitioner of any kind or just interested in some cool things, or in starting an absolute wonderful new timeline with some new friends, come join us this it's gonna be amazing you know i was so happy to hug you shane when you were on your way to a study a few years ago you were on your way and we had pizza remember yep. that i yep. loved it we... so much and i couldn't go but i now i get to hug cynthia and and my new friends and i actually knew pippa from social media and i didn't know she was a speaker till till you shared this graphic. isn't that awesome yeah everybody's yeah. so awesome and um it's gonna be such a fun time so yeah it's this coming november november 7th through the 10th in nashville tennessee and what's cool is uh if you the place, uh, the the venue for the event is actually at the hotel we're staying at. So there's going to be a lot of cool hangout time afterwards. There's a lot of places to sit with couches and stuff in the hallway. Great. So just like hanging out in between and everything, that's some of my favorite part is just meeting people, sure. hearing everyone's stories and everything. So, And then, of course, going out late at night, I'm going to be checking out the stars because I know a lot of us look for our star family at night. So Yeah. Well, oh, so many it. fun parts of this, but yeah, you guys just check out imec.world. I'll leave a link below to uh, take you directly to buying a ticket and come hang out with us. Awesome. Yep. I already know people who bought tickets. I have, besides all the people I mentioned before, I have a couple of clients who are, I know at least are showing up because they're like, oh, you after our session. And so um, they're showing up. So it's going to be not, not a real reunion for right. quantum healers. But uh, like, let's call it a, a, a reunion adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> it so, sounds uh, perfect. And it's in a, yeah. such a great location to drive it for is. so many people to be able to drive. Like Tennessee touches probably more states than any state, I think. It's like, yep, we're it's driving. Funny. I'm not getting on a plane. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> absolutely driving. Our daughter might be in a little more than a year. She's in Japan right now. But one of the places she might be moving to is Memphis, Tennessee. So um, wow. this feels pretentious like that or, or pretending that maybe that will uh, that will show up in our reality. So. So, yeah, it's a nine hour drive for me. Have you figured out how long it is for you guys? Yeah, we're a little more than that, but we're going to stop in Springfield and pick up the other two people and kind of break it up at that point. It won't be quite halfway, but um, I think we'll have about another six hours to go or something after we stop in Springfield. Oh, wow. So, so Springfield's past halfway, huh? Um, or is it almost well, right around the halfway point? Yeah, no, it's not quite. It, I think it's closer. So yeah, it'll be oh, a short okay. day the first one, but there'll be more drivers the second one. So, you know, I'm going to call it good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I, I was born and raised in St. Louis and Springfield is sort of that halfway point from Tulsa to to St. Louis. So Right, right. So yeah, funny. Tom Tom goes to St. Louis quite a bit and yeah, Springfield halfway that way. Wow, yeah. awesome. Well, looking forward to seeing you there, Candace. Thanks Me for coming too. on. Oh, gosh, it was so great to catch up with you again. You know, it's been a few strange years with a lot of weird kind of energy, and it almost feels like maybe we're coming back to a more exciting, um, more positive, collective place. What do you think? I definitely agree. You know, that my guide showed me it was a lot like one of those cymatic plates where they pour the sand on there, and the vibration changes the sand particles into different uh, patterns, you know, as the frequency changes. And they were showing me how like, you know, some sand has to move quite a bit to move into the new frequency pattern. Some grains of sand are kind of going to stay where they're at. Some are going to bounce off the plate. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, just understand it's the, it's just yeah. part of how the movement goes and, you know, uh, life will get shaken up for those who need it to be shaken up a little bit. And it's all part of the process though. So it can feel very intense and chaotic, especially if if you're sort of waking up, I feel sorry for people that are sort of like 
getting bombarded with everything right now because it seems like that's how it's like it's like a crash course on the truth about everything and it can be really daunting but that you know that is only a stepping stone to moving like out of realizing you're a victim to realizing you're even more than that you know so but you have to go through that that period where everything seems so bleak or whatever. So I'm always there to try to encourage people to get over that hump and to realize that you can step out of the role of being the victim and move into being empowered to do whatever you're here to do. And that's why yeah. I love so much about the BQH sessions because it connects people with their true mission and purpose in life. And connecting with people at this conference is another way, knowing that there are people out there with the same mindset, the same positive feeling, the same feeling powerful about creating a better world. That's one of the best things that's going to come out of this conference. I can't wait. Yeah. And we're like water. We're like crystals. So when we get together like that, it's, <laughs> it's a synergistic effect. That's, yeah. that's like the energy of all of us together is more than sort of like, you yes. know, Christ saying, uh, when you guys gather there, I am as well, which is a Mandela effect. But <laughs> I don't know if you knew Perfect. about that one, the two or three. And now it's gathered when, in my name when any two or more are gathered in my name. You're not telling me that one's changed. Yeah, it's, it's not changed. two. It's not two or more anymore. It's two or three. <laughs> if that's four, no! too many people. <laughs> Check it out. That's a crazy one. There's so many Mandela effects. I'm so happy that we're going to get together and be able to talk about all these and blow each other's mind because there's always ones we didn't hear about, you know? You know, you know what I've done. <laughs> You know, the first thing that comes to my mind is this is probably where they got the six foot separation social distancing too. don't be gathering any more than two or three. Oh, my God. Yeah, that does fit that, doesn't it? Oh, my gosh. Oh, God. OK. All right. That's enough excitement for <laughs> one day. Thank you, Shane. Always so great to be with you and speak. Perfect. Thank you guys for being here and listening to Candace and I, and thank you for being here, Candace. Looking forward to seeing anybody that can come join us in November. It's going to be awesome. And with that, we will leave you guys. Links are in the description to Candace's uh, channel and to if you're interested in taking BQH, uh, the tickets to join the conference. us. Yeah. Yeah. Everything mm-hmm. will be down there. All right. Thanks Lots, so much, Shane. Thank you. Lots of love, light, and unity to each and every one of you. Peace. Thank mm-hmm. you.